All right, guys, uh, we'll get started so we don't hang on too much. People can obviously keep coming as we go along. Welcome. Thanks for spending a little bit of your Monday afternoon with us on this rainy Monday. It's not like there's anything to do outside right now. Um, we're going to go through a little bit about the breaststroke pullout today. Uh, Coach Todd is going to kind of be my moderator, so to speak. If you guys have questions or you want to make a comment or something, just kind of raise your hand on screen or, or put your little hand up so it pops up for us to see over on the side and Todd will kind of interrupt me and uh, get your guys questions answered as best we can. So I'm going to start out probably a little bit of um, there's a few videos we're going to show throughout this kind of a little bit of the history of the breaststroke pullout and the evolution of it. And we're going to get into talking about um, the details of the pullout. Um, and the front half is probably going to be a little more me and the back half hopefully i'm going to interact with you guys a little bit more and start to ask you guys questions and have you guys answer answer some of the questions uh, about some of the stuff we see all right so basic old breaststroke pull out we learned it in swim lessons right streamline two three big pull out two three kick up and start swimming breaststroke okay um and that's how it was for years and years and years the biggest problem we used to see with that is people would, you know, the fastest part of your race is off your walls to start and all the walls. And the problem was we'd slow down too much coming off our walls and then have to restart on the pull and then slow down to the kick and restart on the kick, and then have to restart on our breakout cycles. Um, so as this evolved, people started looking for ways to get a little bit faster. We're going to start by watching a video of Mike Barrowman. Um, it is the 200 breast finals from the 1992 Olympics. Um, I, there's a couple shots on there where you can see the underwaters of him and of, of, of a few of the other guys. Uh, but watch especially, you can see the last wall underwater really well. Uh, just kind of watch how there's no movement. He's just floating, waiting to kick and then to pull. All right, now bear with me for a minute. I've only practiced this one time with Coach Todd the other day. I'm gonna do my share screen here and pull up the right video. So I have a list of my videos here with me. Number three. I'm going to share my screen, I think. There we go. Now I'm going to I'm losing my mind here. Video three. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Thank you, Jeremy. All right, we're going to try this right here. Sure. Dig very, very deep. Really go for it in that last 25 meters. In this final, Gillingham three, Barrowman four, Rosa five. <coughs> and a great start. Everyone still, that's always good to see. And a nice start from Nick for a change. He's had three bad ones. Nick nicely placed at 25. Perhaps Carly Guttler, Andy, just ahead. Yes, I think Guttler is ahead, and it's a bit frightening. These two Hungarians in lane five and six. Frighteningly unpredictable they are. They can do absolutely anything from first to last. And they're looking pretty strong at the moment, but Nick is in an excellent place. We usually see him a lot further back than this at the 50 metres. Means to me that he's really going for it and actually came up first and he's actually leading at this stage. Quite amazing for Nick because he usually comes back extremely fast on the second 100 and particularly on the last length. So this is excellent. Very long stroke. Looks really superb. That's Barrowman at the bottom of the picture. But Nick Gillingham in great shape at the moment let's hope that leg holds up and he looks fantastic Cammy, at the halfway coming in well he's turned second and that is excellent swimming from nick gillingham perfectly placed let's hope that he's got the energy left doesn't usually go out that fast very strong leg kick barrowman starting to pick it up very strong again very tight, really quick legs, Barrowman really shoots his legs back and squeezes them together. That's where you get the pressure from. That's the break now from Barrowman then. He's taken a metre and a half off Gillingham up this third 50. Rose is there in third place. Nick perhaps just about level. Gillingham level for second at that turn. It's a great turn from Gillingham. Oh, a superb underwater stroke from the European champion. Gillingham is now coming at Mike Barrowman. Barrowman 
Gillingham's still there, but Gillingham's coming back. They're crossing the 25. Barrowman is holding on. Gillingham is in silver medal position, but he's still coming. Gillingham with a super finish. Rolls is coming back as well, but Gillingham's in second place. It's going to be gold for Barrowman. Can Gillingham get the silver? Get in there. Gold for Barrowman. The silver medal, in fact, going. Oops. Hold on. There we go. All right, I think I'm back. Can you hear me? Good. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> We're just talking about pullouts, but you can see on that last pullout right there, um, you can see how he just floated, and you can literally see him decelerating coming off his wall. So that was a race 28 years ago uh, this year, Olympic gold medal race, world record race, and they were still slowing down coming off their walls. Coming out of that, um, not too long after that, breaststrokers started looking for a way to make their underwater pullouts a little bit faster. Um, they wanted an advantage and they started to add dolphin kicks, which were not legal at that point. Um, so basically they started to cheat, but it was so hard for people to call that they never, that they rarely got disqualified for doing that because nobody had seen it before and nobody expected it and the officials weren't looking for it. So we're gonna watch another video right now. And this is, there's no sound, well there's sound, but it's all music in this video. Uh, there's some writing on the screen, but it's gonna highlight three swimmers who, did illegal breaststroke pullouts. The first one is a Russian named Cameron Vanderberg. And we're gonna talk about these a little bit afterwards from the 2012 London Olympics. Um, he'll be listed as number three on the video. Listed as number two on the video is Darren Mew from England. And from the 2006 Melbourne Commonwealth Games in Australia, uh, the show on the 50 meter breaststroke, but he did it in both the 50 and 100 meter breaststroke. And then Kasuki Kitajima, um, the Hunter Breast and the 2004 Athens Olympics. So we'll talk a little bit about each one of them afterwards, but take a look at it. And I have a, I have a job for you guys during these videos. Pay attention to each one. And I want you to try to keep track of how many dolphin kicks each one of them takes on the video you're being shown. All right, so write it down or remember it in your head for each specific person, how many, how many dolphin kicks they're taking during their pullout. All right, give me a second. I'll get this one pulled up. It's really cheesy music, but read the screen. I'll have information on the screen for you as well. <clears throat> Sorry, we skipped that. There we go. This
Welcome back. All right, so let's talk about number three, the very first one we saw, Cameron Vanderberg. Raise your hand, put a hand up, whatever, or put a, just put a number up. How many dolphin kicks did he take during his? Hold up some numbers. Let me see. Put your fingers up to the camera. I see a lot of threes. Those, I see a four. I see mostly threes. The three is correct. So he took three extra kicks. And his underwater pullout. And if you saw his his rationale, it was if he didn't do that, he'd be falling behind because other people were doing it. Um, all right, the middle guy, Darren Mew from England. How many dolphin kicks did he take in that video? Put some fingers up. I'm looking all the way throughout both screens on my phone or on my computer. Yep, four kicks. Three in the three during the streamline and one during the pullout. So he took four dolphin kicks in each one. Um, and, he, and he did that. They only showed you one race, but he did it in both the 50 and the 100-meter breaststroke at those Commonwealth Games. It never got DQ'd for any of them. And the last one we showed you, which is from the 2004 Athens Olympics, was Kitajima from Japan. How many kicks did he take? Okay, let me, let me ask a better question. How many kicks did he, did he take off his start? Tell me how many he took off his start. Three would be the correct answer. He took three off his start. How many did he take off the turn? When they showed the turn, how many was it? I'll look at the second page. Coach Todd got that one. He only took one. He only took one. Now, why do you think that is? Somebody raise your hand. I'm going to unmute you. Why do you think he took three dolphin kicks off the start, but only one off the turn? And there's no definite right answer for this. Jilly, unmute yourself. There you go. Maybe like even it out or something. I don't know. Maybe, he's... maybe even it out. Who else? Give another shot. Neo? It's more clear, like underwater, you could see that he's taking more dolphin kicks when he's just diving in. But then when he's like swimming, um, people can't, can see that he only took one. Maybe. Who else? Anybody else have a have a theory as to why he took three off the start and only one off his wall. Coach Mike, join us. Uh, why? Um, when you dive in, there, there's no official standing behind your block looking. There's a lot of turbulence when you hit the water there, so that can be disguised. But turn in, there's an official right over your lane. Yep. That's, that, that was my main thought process. Another thought process could have been he was tired and he didn't want to be underwater that long. Um, so there's varying reasons. But – Bottom line is many, many people got really angry after Kitajima did that in the Olympics. And by then, they had such good underwater footage during the Olympics that everybody in the world saw it. Uh, Brendan Hansen, the U.S. breaststroker, was crazy angry and went off about it. Um, so FINA is the one who makes the technical rules, and then the USA Swimming follows the FINA technical rules. So following those Olympics, they changed the rules to allow one dolphin kick. Um, so he literally changed the sport. Uh, when he cheated in the 2004 Olympics. So they they felt it was too hard to for officials to call that consistently, so they made it legal. Um, the initial rule was they allowed one kick um, during the pullout. You couldn't start that kick until your hands broke. So you couldn't be in a streamline and do the dolphin kick. Your hands had to break in order to do the dolphin kick. Then you can do the kick either. And when, when most of us started, we did the paw and did the big dolphin kick as we pulled. And then eventually, as people learned it better and got, and got more adept to the new rule, we started doing the dolphin kick before we initiated the pullout. 
uh, people found that it gave you more speed and got you further off the fastest part of your race, which is the wall. Um, after about 10 years, I think it was about 2014, about six years ago, they, they amended the rule again to say that you didn't have to break the hands. You just, you had to do, you were able to do one dolphin kick before you initiated your first breaststroke kick. In other words, the kick back up to the surface. So that's where we're at now. And that's what you guys um, at your age are all, all used to being able to stay in your streamline and do that dolphin kick before you initiate your pull. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about current best practices. Um, in other words, we're gonna talk about the actual breaststroke pull-up. Um, we're gonna watch a great video. It's an excellent video uh, from Chloe Sutton. It's only a couple minutes long. And then after we watch Chloe Sutton's video, we are gonna break it down a little bit and you guys are gonna answer questions from me um, about, what we, about what was talked about in the video. So here we go. Hi everybody, I'm two-time Olympic swimmer Chloe Sutton and today we're going to be talking about the breaststroke pullout. Sorry guys, I got some internet issues. It doesn't There are three keys to a fast breaststroke pullout. Number one, maintain your momentum. Move through each of the steps with timing that allows you to keep your momentum up throughout the pullout. Number two, minimize drag. Keep your body tight throughout and cut through the water with the least amount of drag possible. And three, control your depth. Make sure that you're breaking out right at the surface and with your whole body level. Pushing off with a nice tight string line. Hand on hand, squeezing your head and your ankles together. Then execute a fairly large but fast dolphin kick, feeling an up, down, then up again motion with your legs. After that, you'll pull your arms down and place your hands on your thighs to minimize drag. You'll round your back to create what I call the torpedo body, which creates lift and helps you maintain the proper depth and body position. Finally, sneak your hands up while maintaining contact with your body before shooting your hands forward and back into a straight line. Just my computer, but yeah, I think, give me one I think second. Jeremy's is going in and out as well. Give me one second. I'm going to change what I have this hooked up to. I switched what I had it hooked up to because I was having trouble getting logged in initially. Sorry about this, guys. All right, here we go. All right, we're going to try that video again. One second. everybody, I'm two-time Olympic swimmer Chloe Sutton, and today we're going to be talking about the breaststroke pullout. There are three keys to a fast breaststroke pullout. Number one, maintain your momentum. Move through each of the steps with timing that allows you to keep your momentum up throughout the pullout. Number two, minimize drag. 
Keep your body tight throughout and cut through the water with the least amount of drag possible. And three, control your depth. Make sure that you're breaking out right at the surface and with your whole body level. Start out pushing off with a nice tight streamline. Hand on hand, squeeze your head and your ankles together. Then execute a fairly large but fast dolphin kick, feeling an up, down, then up again motion with your legs. After that, you'll pull your arms down and place your hands on your thighs to minimize drag. You'll round your back to create what I call a torpedo body, which creates lift and helps you maintain the proper depth and body position. Finally, sneak your hands up while maintaining contact with your body before shooting your hands forward and back into a streamline. I hope that worked much better the second time. And there you can see that. All right. She started the video talking about three keys to speed. Okay. Three keys to speed. Who remembers the first one? Nobody. Okay. I'll talk about it real quick. Um, my basic equation that I use. Emily, Emily Raigula raised her hand. Oh, sorry, Ryan, I missed Emily Raigula raised her hand. All right, Emily, go ahead. It's okay. Emily Raigula raised her hand. I missed it. Go ahead. Oh, it was maintain your momentum. Excellent. Maintain your momentum. Anybody know the second one? Neo. You got to unmute yourself, Neo. Minimize drag. Good. Minimize drag. And the last one. Nobody. I don't see anybody that has their hand up. Oh, wait. Joey Dunn's Joey. got it. Joey, what do you got? Uh, I think the last one is control your depth. Exactly. Control your depth. So I use a real basic equation when I talk to my, to my athletes about swimming and Jeremy and Todd probably have a much more detailed algorithm than I do, but mine is real simple. It's power minus speed, excuse me, power minus resistance equals speed. Um, so power means maintain your momentum, maintain your, okay, your power coming off the wall. Two, minimize your drag, minimize your resistance. Resistance that's going to give you your element of speed. And obviously controlling your depth plays a part of that. A lot of times, so many of us tend to float up towards the top surface of the water a little bit too quick. Steps of the pullouts. There were five steps of the pullout. Who can give me the first one? Should be pretty simple. First step, Elizabeth. Sorry, Haley Vilchak. Oh, so you got one? Elizabeth Naraki, come on. Um, Try that again. Oh, uh, uh, oh, uh, push it off the wall and streamline. Yep. You want to have a tight streamline. What did Chloe mention is a good thing to, th to do to think about when you're in your streamline. Joey? Were you raising your hand? Uh, 
Coach Glenn showing you guys something. I know it's harder on Zoom than it is when we're all in a, in a group. Um, you talked about squeezing your arms and legs together to make sure you're tighter. And you can remember that in all your strokes, actually. Second step, you started your streamline. What's the next step? In your pull out. You're in your streamline. What, 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 are, you, what are you gonna do next? Streamline, next step, pull down. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No. Streamline. Neo's got his hand up, Brian. Thank you. Dolphin kick. Dolphin kick. Exactly. Make sure you and, and you want to think about kicking up, kicking down, and kicking back up. Okay. Uh, make sure you're getting power both directions. Just, just don't just let your legs float up for one big down kick. Make sure you're kicking in both directions. Okay. Finish your dolphin kick. What's step three? <laughs> Haley Volchek, what's step three? You want me to have Braden answer it? Oh, I didn't see his hand, sorry. Yeah, Braden, go ahead. Uh, pull down, I think. Pull down, right. You're going to do your pull down. Pull your arms down. Where are you going to put your hands to minimize drag, Braden? Uh, on your thighs. On your thighs, exactly. The next one's an, uh, a name that I haven't used for it, but what, what's step four? Anybody remember what step four is? Neo's got his hand up if you want to call on Neo again. Sure, go ahead, Neo. Torpedo body. Torpedo body. What does that mean? What? What 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 does that mean? To have a torpedo body? Um round your back to create lift. Round your upper back. Right. So you maintain your depth in the water. Good. And then step five, the last one. Very last one. After you do your pull down, Sadie. Sadie Murphy's got her hand up. Um, sneak your hands up. Sneak your hands up back into your streamline while doing what? When you're sneaking your hands back up, what are you doing? I didn't hear you. Uh, you're kicking. You're kicking. You're right. You're doing your big kick you're to doing get you your back up. Yep. Now, then she showed you how to put it, how it looked when it was put all together. Um, did you know, one thing I wanted to point out was, I hope you noticed that her head position stayed exactly the same from the moment she got, came off the wall, all the way through the boat pull out all five steps until she took, was coming up to take her first breaststroke cycle with a breath. The head never moves. Too many of us. We get in that streamline, we bring the hands back up, and as we, we kick up, we lift the head up before we go into that first arm cycle. We want to make sure we keep that head all the way down until we enter that first arm cycle to come up and take that breath. Now, we're going to watch a video of Molly Hannis, 2016, just four years ago. This is from Omaha, U.S. Olympic trials, a 200 breaststroke, women's 200 breaststroke final. Okay. I believe she's in lane three. Um, it'll show you right at the beginning of the video. I want you to watch her the whole way. She's an orange Tennessee cap on. She's swam in Tennessee. And I want you to watch all her, her, her start and all four walls. And I want you to watch what she did differently off of her last wall. And then we're going to talk about that. Yep, lane three. Here we go. After this message from our sponsor, maybe.
Just give it a second. Well, what happened on the start is when she went off the block. What happened on the start is when she went off the block, her, her hand went down by her side and she didn't qualify for the final. This is a much better event for her in any way. Is it choppy? Way because nobody's best time is even close to Micah Lawrence's. In fact, she's about two and a half seconds ahead of everybody else, but nobody has the speed as this lady right here. That's frustrating. Sorry, guys. I apologize, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to start that again. As I said, my internet is just. I'm gonna change who where I'm connected. Give me one second. Come on. All right, let me try it again now. Well, what happened on the start is when she went off the block, her, her hand went down by her side and she didn't qualify for the final. This is a much better event for her in any way because nobody's best time is even close to Micah Lawrence's. In fact, she's about two and a half seconds ahead of everybody else, but nobody has the speed. It's this lady right here, Lily King. She will blast it out first 50 as fast, second 50 as fast. Not a lot of experience, though, here in the 200 press. Yeah, she was worried about how am I supposed to swim this 200 distance. But there's Lily King, who expected to go out with the early lead, and Michael Lawrence is below her in lane five as they go four lengths of the pool to punch the next two tickets in this 200 breast. Well, the top four about a second and a half ahead of the bottom four. Watch Gallant. She's right there in lane number six. She'll come off the patient. She's had some heartbreakers, as you said. Third in the 400 IM, so close there. She was sixth in the 100 breast. Lawrence also will definitely come off the pace. She's right there next to King in perfect position. This is what she likes the most, is to come off and come back on that second 100 right there with that dark cap starting to inch up on King already. After the disappointment of the 100, final chance for Michael Lawrence to make her second straight Olympic team. Lily King just up above her, still out in front. Lawrence running a clear second. Molly Hannes is above King in lane three, looking to make a move as well as is Gallet in lane six below Lawrence. Hannes has got to push this pressure on the third 50. She had the slowest third 50 in the uh, semis, but the fastest last 50. Don't take your eye off of her. Lily King still with the lead as they race for home. King trying to make it a double in the 100 and the 200. And Lawrence trying to get on the team below her. Molly Watch. Hannes is above King. Watch. Blind pressure as well. Watch Hannes. Watch Hannes. Molly Hannes creeping up on King. Lawrence is fading, and now it's a battle between Hannes and King. Lily King is going to make it again and will sweep the two breaststrokes as she goes to the wall. And in second is Hannes. Michael Lawrence out of it. Thirteen one hundredths of a second celebrates. 
Okay, so apologize for a little bit of a choppy video. Uh, anybody see what Molly did differently on the last wall than she did on the other walls? Only one person. Anybody else notice what she did differently on the last wall? Izzy or Anya, go ahead. Uh, she didn't do a pullout. Exactly, she didn't do a pullout. Um, why don't you think she did a pullout? Anybody? Neo. She was tired. She was tired. What else? We're just theorizing here. Yeah, Taking a guess. Why else might she not have done a pullout? Elizabeth? Maybe she thought she could swim faster, like like have a faster stroke than glide underwater. Absolutely, late in the race, it's a definite possibility. I'm guessing that's probably closer to it. Raise your hand if you've ever not done a pullout in a breaststroke race. Interesting. Um, Haley, you had a suggestion, you had a thought. Uh, maybe she was out of breath. Could have been out of breath, thought she'd be faster and wouldn't slow her down. Those are all good examples. Um, we usually have about 600 kids on our team, and I really only know of one. Oh, Braden, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, maybe she's not as good as underwater pullouts. But what, why would she do them in the first three and not on the last one? Uh, probably because she thought, yeah, she was tired. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. So, obviously, the vast, vast majority of people do an underwater pullout off of every this. wall and breaststroke. And if you don't do it, your coach probably gets on your case about it. Um, but there are times um, when a swimmer won't do it, like you saw with Molly. That may have won, got, won her spot in the Olympic team. She was second. Um, maybe that saved her enough time to do it. Uh, we actually have a bullet that is a junior national qualifier on our team, uh, heading off to college this year, who doesn't do pullouts. So I've asked Coach Jeremy to just kind of explain uh, the theory behind that swimmer not doing pullouts, because not it's not one, one size fits all, especially in breaststroke. Breaststroke's a very individualized stroke. So Coach Jeremy, thank you. Yeah, um, so Kelsey Krish, um, we took away her pullout uh, her sophomore year of high school. I think it was probably September, early September uh, during the high school season. Um, so I'm a couple of meets her high school season and uh, she was just losing a lot of, um, she was just losing walls. Uh, you know, her dolphin kick was, was a little bit too big and she's, she's a better puller than she is kicker anyway. Um, so we kind of figured that, you know, if we could get her on the surface a little bit earlier and, and get moving, um, that it would be an overall net benefit. Um, not to mention, you know, when, when you, uh, when you start your kick and breaststroke, um, on the pullout, you, you drop to zero velocity, right? Uh, everybody drops to zero velocity. So, uh, if you've got a strong kick, you can overcome that and get, and get back up and get moving. Uh, pretty effectively, uh, but because she is a, a stronger puller than kicker, um, she was she was just putting herself in a hole that she couldn't get out of. Uh, so we just took it out um, between meets. I think we had a Tuesday meet, practiced uh, breaststroke without a pullout on Wednesday, went to a Thursday meet, and, and she was a full second faster. And we just we kept going with that from then on. Um, now we have. We have, uh, over the course of the last uh, few months, experimented with bringing it back, um, just in preparation for, for college and, and things, um, but uh, haven't got a chance to, to do it at a meet yet, so um, something we're looking for, but um, yeah, that's what we've been up to. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that, because it is not, certainly not one size fits all. Guys, I'm at the point where if you guys have any questions, we're happy to, I'm happy to answer them. Shoot your hand up or whatever.
I appreciate you guys joining us this afternoon. I hope you learned a little bit about the breaststroke pullout, whys, and and the technique. Anybody have any questions? Brian, can I, can sure. I add a couple things? Yeah. Um, well, first off, you brought up the Molly Hannis race. And it's actually a fascinating race because it was the first race um, that I can recall of a national level swimmer eliminating a pullout, especially when she did them on the first three. And I remember uh, Coach Mike and I were actually at the meet. Coach Jeremy, I think you were there when the race happened. Did you come right? You came. You left right afterwards. Maybe that's what it was. Or was it was Jeff came afterwards. I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, we watched it. I remember us having a fascinating discussion about it and why. And I don't remember if it was Mike that asked the question to her coach. Was it you, Mike, that asked Matt why? He might not be hearing me. Anyways, the answer was why she got rid of it was she was – her coach's entire race plan was for her to increase tempo to a significant number on the last 50. That was the only chance he felt like she had to do it. When she does a pullout, she loses tempo the first three to four strokes of the 50. By eliminating the pullout, she was able to increase her tempo right from the get-go, and that was the right. reason that he felt like she made the team. Uh, yep. But it was all by design. Her design was specifically to eliminate that pullout so that right. she could have her stroke rate at a certain speed immediately. And that was her only shot of catching – what they felt her only shot was of catching Lily and Micah in the race to make the team. So it was, it was very interesting. It, was, it had nothing to do with – I mean, yes, obviously breath control was part of it because – her holding her breath slowed her down so much to do that. But she was a strong pullout swimmer, very strong pullout swimmer. This was yes. purely by not doing it, and she had such a great kick, she could establish tempo at a rate. And if you watch her, and especially that last 15, look at her stroke rate compared to her competitors. It's not even close. I mean, she's, she's blowing the doors off. Um, and she has that speed for almost the entire 50 because of, of elimination of that pullout. Um, you also brought out that not one size fits all. And I think that we as coaches, um, I know at least for, from Aurora swimmers, you know, when we first learned the dolphin kick with, with Kitajima and Rowdy Gaines being the voice of swimming, announcing it over and over again when those Olympics are playing, that he cheated, he cheated, he cheated. Um, and we first learned to incorporate this. Everyone was incorporating it, as you described, when the rule started. And then when they addressed the rule, I think everyone made that first move of, starting the kick as high as they possibly could. That's just what everyone felt like it was. And I think it's become more and more, um, more and more accepted that now it definitely is not an everyone's, every size fits all. We have people that are learning it here when their hands are together. People are doing it with their hands are apart before they pull. People that are doing it during the pull. I think, I think it's become much, much more unique to the individual as it is just a standard one size fits all type movement. So. That's my two cents to add. I would agree. And it's, it's like that with the regular breaststroke as well, which you'll learn as we go along the week this week. We're having a nice breaststroke week. So any questions? Anything? Raise your hand, throw it in chat. Um, I have really enjoyed having the opportunity to do, this, to, to do this with you guys. It's the first Zoom presentation that I've run. So I apologize for my choppy internet, but I can't control that sadly. A uh, couple of reminders, you got your weekly site meetings coming up the next two days. Thursday, we're having a Q&A with Tyler Klatt, former Bartlett swimmer. Um, it's going to be a little bit interesting um, from the standpoint of he's someone who thought for sure he knew what he wanted into college and got there and realized he was wrong. Um, and he, he, his exact words to me were, I think my story is something that the, these sw younger swimmers should hear. Um, hey, so Brian. I'm looking forward to doing that. Yes. Can I ask a question of the coaches and you on this call? I think it'd be, it'd be a good little add on. I know we talked about it with the dolphin kicks, the distance that you're looking to travel off the wall. You know, I know dolphin kicks, we talked about, you know, everyone wants to go 15 meters. Uh, maybe you could just address, or maybe Brian or I'm sorry, Mike or Jeremy want to chime in on, on feelings on distance off the walls. Sure. Is there, is there a distance we're shooting for? Um, is there a, a, a point to which we feel like we should be initiating one piece after the other? I mean, I think it, it depends on the athlete, but I would like to hear what, what Jeremy or Mike think and then what you think just to, to share with these athletes so they can hear different perspectives. Well, I'll start, and then those two guys can certainly chime in. Um, my thing is, again, we go back to the not one size fits all. Some of your pull-outs should be shorter, some should be longer. And to me, uh, first of all, there's no 15-meter rule in breaststroke. You can go a whole 25, you can go a whole 25. Um, 
to me, it's a matter of when it does it become counterproductive. It's great to have a really long breaststroke pullout, but if it's a really long slow breaststroke pullout, that's not helping you because the clock is running. So it's a matter of minimizing your slowdown. Um, when you come off the wall, if you wait until you almost stop and then restart the pullout, and then wait till you stop and restart the breaststroke kick, you're constantly restarting your stroke. Um, so I think it's just a matter of how much speed you can maintain, how much momentum you can maintain off that wall before the dolphin kick, through the dolphin kick, into the pullout, then into your breaststroke kick before before coming up. So I don't think there's a distinct answer on how far you should go. Um, I think it's just a matter of who can maintain the momentum off the wall. Jeremy. I agree. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't have a set distance in in mind. Um, I think it's more uh, dependent on how strong your your movements are. Um, you know, the whole point is to maintain wall velocity for as as long as you can. Um, so I guess w when we when we really kind of uh, look at it when we're having kids practice it or whatever, um, we, we try to go with a visual cue, but also just kind of feel, uh, you know, if you could, if you, if the bottom of your pool has tiles, it's pretty easy to see as, uh, as you're going along when the tiles start to slow down as they're going past your face. And if, uh, if, if they've already started slowing down, you've waited too long. Um, you know, I, I guess what I tell the, our kids is, um, if you if you feel a huge surge when you do the movements of your pullout, you waited too long to do those movements, right? Because we want to maintain velocity, not generate velocity or regenerate velocity, because that's that's very taxing. So it shouldn't feel powerful as much as it should uh, just kind of keep you going um, at the speed that at which you came off the wall. Uh, so if you feel that big surge or if you see if you've got tiles at the bottom of the pool and you see the tiles slow down and then speed up and then slow down and then speed up, you're waiting till too long to go through the, the phases of each pullout. Mike? Yeah, I'm just going to echo what, what Jeremy said. Um, if you start to decelerate, and it's a great cue of seeing the, the tiles, if they start slowing down or worse, come to a stop, then you've come to a stop. The pool didn't stop you. You stopped. Um, I like to keep the underwater pull somewhere between four and five seconds. Uh, if you, anything over five seconds, I think you're just slowing down too much underwater. Even if, even if you're not a great breaststroker, um, the only person I ever saw really not be a good breaststroker and actually get away with monster underwater pulls with a guy was a guy named Seth Dunscombe in the 200 IM at high school state. He literally <laughs> almost went to the other flags on his pullouts. But he was that bad, but he was so strong he could get away with it. But like Jeremy said, if stuff is, if you feel different surges and if you're slowing down, uh, you're waiting too long. You don't want to lose that speed you come off the wall with. Awesome. Thanks for that question, Ted. That was a good talk. Anyone else? No questions from the kids? I covered everything perfectly. All the coaches chimed in. Awesome. Well, I reminded you about the Bullets Q&A on Thursday at 4.30. And then Saturday, the last gold, if you haven't seen it, it's a documentary about the 1976 Olympics and the East Germans, uh, when we beat the East Germans. Um, you know, hop on, make some popcorn, sit down. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, come on and watch a movie with us. Uh, just a great way. So you guys stay home, stay safe, stay active. Appreciate you guys being here. We'll see you on another call soon. All right.